Hi, greetings, it's me, Dr. Paul Gerhardt, and this is video number 11 of my marketing series of videos. And today's video is gonna focus on product, branding, and packaging decisions. And I know that we have all different types of uh, people who are watching this video, and maybe you just wanna learn about marketing. Well, packaging is something that we uh, think about all the time. And you yourself, you are a brand and you're packaging yourself too. So even if your whole goal is to develop a reputation as a human being and then be able to continue to grow your career, you have to think about your own personal brand as well. So there's a lot of different companies out there who have made their name because they've done a really good job with branding. We're gonna talk a little bit about what branding is and the power of branding and take a look at what some of the most famous companies are doing as it relates to uh, qualities uh, related to the branding world. So branding really is kind of a complex topic and so I'm going to talk about some of the major ideas related to uh, branding today and including uh, extension lines, uh, product packaging, labeling strategies, um, uh, how consumers uh, see each brand, that kind of stuff. So uh, there are different levels of quality in almost every type of product or service. And it really is one of the most important concepts that organizations make is where do they want to position themselves? Who are their core customers and how do they uh, help customers identify the customer value and very often they intentionally do it through packaging and uh, feature design so there's a lot of different products out there that we could use for example uh, generally speaking types of products are specialty products uh, shopping onsot uh, convenience and uh, we need to consider product mix and product lines. And so let me give you an example from the car world. Uh, in BMW, they have essentially four different major product lines. And in that, they've got the BMW 2 Series, 3 Series, 4 Series, 5 Series, 6 Series, 7 Series, X Series, uh, Z4 series, BMW i, and hybrid series. And then they have the whole line of mini series, which has got the Clubman, Convertible, Countryman, Coupe, Hardtop, John Cooper Works, Paceman, Roadster. They also have the Rolls Royce line, Ghost, Phantom, Wraith. And then they own Motorrad too, and that's the C series, F series, G series, K series, R series, and S series. And just like uh, most products, you know, maybe none of these are good for you, or maybe some of these because they've branded themselves perfectly, uh, that you have your specific model that you want. And so that's what marketers do. They really identify who their customers are and they create products just for them. And so there's a lot of way of doing things. You, you can never be all things to all people. Um, I'm not necessarily a, a BMW guy. I'm definitely not a Rolls Royce type of guy. I can't see myself in that, but I know that some people will dream of having Rolls Royces and good for them. You know, we're all different. We all have the right to be different. Uh, with product mixes, we have to make product line decisions. Uh, one of the largest companies in the world is Pepsi. And with Pepsi, uh, they have uh, different products that wake people up, for instance. And so now there's a Diet Pepsi, Pepsi Max with ginseng and more caffeine in it. And so that's a specialized uh, drink that um, may reach um, a greater number of people. You know, people who want to wake up, people with active lifestyles, for instance. So um, you have to think of breadth and then depth. And with breadth, it is about the number of product lines that think about Pepsi, how many they may have, or depth, the number of categories within a product line. So uh, when you change your product mix depth, you could either increase it or decrease it. And you, an example is like Band-Aid. 
Uh, everyone knows the company Band-Aid. Well, they now have over 40 products to help heal cuts. Uh, McCormick Spices eliminates dozens of products each year, you know, so that they're better known for more, uh, more very specific uh, seasonings, for instance. Um, with uh, True Religion, they've increased their their breadth. They are now a lifestyle brand with apparel, belts, swimwear, and fragrances. So uh, more breadth. Um, TCBY had a lot more products, and they have decreased their breadth, and now they mainly focus on yogurt. So. Uh, Organizations have to make sure that they are focusing their time and resources uh, to meet their financial goals. And you know, the more uh, breadth you have, uh, the more costs and marketing you have to maintain. So, product line decisions. You have to ask yourself as a marketer, how how is this changing my product mix? What uh, does it increase the depth or the breadth? And is this uh, research or advertising? So you, you need to be very clear on where you are. I'm a huge fan of branding, and one of the things that I like to always say is, we are our own brand manager. I know that Dr. Paul Gerhardt has got to mean quality. It's got to mean kindness. Uh, it's got to mean uh, helping others and it's got to be constant improvement. To me, that's what my personal um, brand is in my mind. And I'm hoping that if people see me, they think that I'm a very kind person. And so uh, in order for me to build my brand professionally, uh, I need to make sure that everything I do is in alignment with that. Well, because I also have a training and development line, uh, I have a my own logo that was designed professionally, like most companies, and I actually have a, a uh, trademark, licensed trademark on that. And so, companies always do things to help build their own brand. So they have a very distinct name, very distinct logos and symbols, and characters, slogans, jingles. Um, we all know. Uh, who the toucan is that represents, you know, Fruit Loops, right? For instance, so um, a lot of different things that help people remember your product out there, and that really is what branding is all about. So there are very famous brand names and logos and symbols out there that gives you a feeling about it. One of my favorite companies is Starbucks for instance and I love a lot of people love Starbucks like I love Starbucks. Uh, one of my other favorite brands is Costco and Costco uses the Kirkland uh, line as their brand for a lot of different things. So um, branding is very very powerful. Uh, a lot of companies use slogans um, to help build their brand image. And so uh, value branding for the customer is really, really important. Uh, we, all, ideally, we as uh, company owners, we want our people to really ha be loyal to us. And that means we need to be loyal to them. You know, we have to understand what they need and we need to do things that help support what they need. And as a company, uh, you have to be very clear on what your assets are, the impact of your market value. So some very famous companies that are always doing things in their sector to build their ranking, they, they use brand awareness. In the technology field, uh, Apple and Google and Microsoft and Samsung and Intel. They're always comparing their their ranks with each other. And you can do this uh, with um, uh, with you know what how much they're valued at, for instance. Uh, for beverages, Coca-Cola and Pepsi always seem to be at the very top. And you know, for restaurants like McDonald's always has some high ranking, but it's moved down the rankings up and down depending on how other companies can compete with their brands. So uh, being able to really look at brand equity 
it really has to do with brand awareness. People become loyal to brands when customers give them reasons to help them become loyal to brands. You know, so uh, brand equity really is all about perceived value. Uh, think about some companies like Target, TJ Maxx. Uh, what do they do to help create value for their customers? Well, think about the pictures that are hanging in their windows, for instance, or the way things are are boxed up. You know, all of these things are very intentional. Uh, we are always associating things with a particular brand, like that big red and white bullseye for Target, for instance. You know, people think about low prices, but quality, usually with, with Target. That's what I'm guessing they are. Um, Consumers sometimes are often less sensitive to price when they have brand loyalty. And a company that's done a really good job with building um, loyal customers is State Farm, for instance. You know, their marketing costs are kind of lower because they've got good word of mouth, you know, in, the, in you know, marketing because they build good solid uh, reputation with their customers. So, a lot of... Uh, Things that we see that we purchase are owned either by a manufacturer or they're owned by like a store for instance. Um, so there are private label brands or store brands and there are premium, generic and copycat and exclusive and the, like co-branded things. Let's talk a little bit about those things. So uh, with private label. Uh, for instance, um, maybe you can think of a coffee or a cookie that has a uh, private label. Um, these are our store brand names. This is a very famous grocery store that has the decadent name for their cookies, for instance. Uh, grocery store uh, uses organics as their, their brand name. So, um, don't want to promote any particular company, but when you're looking at private levels, these are usually retail stores that own their own line. Like, for instance, sometimes it's pretty blatant, like Kroger is a grocery company, and their store brand is Kroger. But they have similar products as the Kellogg. Uh, line and uh, that's a national brand for instance so famous Amos is more of an individual brand and then you know Kroger has its own cookie line so that's the a good example about how um, you know there are different brands and the perceptions that come along with those brands so some of them are it's about a feeling of quality and when you buy a national brand you may think that uh, you, you feel like you're getting a better quality product, for instance, and you're willing to pay a little bit more because it's a national brand. Whereas um, other individual store brands, uh, they may be a little bit cheaper, but they may actually f fulfill the same function. So it's a matter of perception. Brand extension is another concept that we probably are all aware of. Crest is a very famous toothpaste manufacturer, but it hasn't been too many years now that they've actually gotten into the toothbrush line and the, uh, like the Glide, uh, what's that stuff called? Dental floss, yeah, dental floss line. That's a, uh, that's a brand extension too. So it wouldn't make sense for Crest to get into the motor oil business though, right? Their, their expertise really is in dental care products. So you want to associate a brand with a particular industry in most cases. So it really is important to understand how uh, companies may be diluting their brand too. And, and as marketers, you have to be very, very aware uh, how you may be extending your products or overextending uh, the products lines that you, you're recognized for. Co-branding is something also that you should be considering and very famous co-branding that we've been seeing a lot more in each of our cities is like Taco Bell and Pizza Hut. Uh, they've got stores that have, have both of those products. You know, people are hungry, people are, want a low cost, um, in this case usually lunch or dinner, 
and so they can go in the same place and half their family can have tacos and the other half could have pizza. So brand licensing is another consideration and uh, there are companies that allow other companies to use uh, their images or products to co-brand. I'm thinking of like the NBA licenses um, the use to the bobblehead company for so people have the NBA's players are licensed out to the bobblehead company so that they can um, sell those products and so uh, that helps promote that's a a uh, brand licensing issue there, and then there's brand repositioning you know being able to look at one product and show another um, thing that it can that it also does so Dawn dishwashing liquid for instance is a very famous brand for washing dishes but it's being repositioned with a uh, as an air freshener they smell nice now and so that's one way of looking at it. its repositioning. Packaging is another thing it, if, uh, that helps people be very aware of a particular brand. So packaging needs to stay constant once they're finding success with that. And very often people will look for a particular distinguished look for something because they associate quality or value in that. So, uh, like Perrier is an example, Green Bottle, Altoids red tin, Tiffany turquoise box, you know, these are things that are memorable that help uh, position uh, them in line of quality. And product listings is really important too. Uh, many companies these days are using specific terms on their labels to help people uh, choose that, you know, a good source of vitamin C natural, organic, made in the USA. You know, labeling is very, very important. Important. So uh, hopefully I've given you some things to think about that you could apply and use in your everyday life. Or if you're starting your own business or you own your own business and you're thinking about how you could grow your business, uh, product, branding, and packaging decision is one of the most important things that you could, could do. So anyway, I hope this video has been of value to you. And uh, more than anything else, I hope that you have a great day because only you get to choose how you feel about it. I'm Dr.